Hey YouTube, it's Icy, and welcome to the 229th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and really quick, before we get started, for those of you interested in winning a brand new Apple Watch, be sure to rate this video up and stick around until the end for instructions on how to enter my giveaway, which is concluding soon. Now, let's talk about jailbreaking. So, in the last episode of this series, Best Tech and Phone Rumors, I mentioned how the next jailbreak utility, whether it be from Taiji or Pangu, both of whom have independently confirmed that they are working on new jailbreak utilities, will actually be heavily contingent upon the release of iOS 8.4, Apple's next major iOS 8 release. So if you happen to miss that video for whatever reason, again, I definitely recommend watching through it now. But really quick, just to summarize before getting into the new Intel in today's video, essentially 8.4 will be the last major iOS 8 release. We're not going to get as far as iOS 8.5 based on past rumors that accurately predicted every single major iOS 8 update. So 8.4 will be the last release, excluding any potential 8.4.x updates, which could vary well patch a new jailbreak utility intended for release for iOS 8.4. However, when you think about it, Apple would definitely patch an iOS 8.3 jailbreak with the release of a known firmware being iOS 8.4, so close to release. In fact, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you guys about now. iOS 8.4 will actually be expedited. So for those of you who don't know, recently a new bug started going around and it actually became viral that causes a device to crash when receiving a specific message message containing English, Arabic, and Unicode characters. And I actually did a video covering it and demonstrating it. It seems to affect all iOS devices, jailbroken or not, from iOS 8 up until the latest public firmware being 8.3, and some reports even suggest that it functions on 8.4, betas one through three. Now, interestingly, in the video that I just mentioned, I actually discussed how it could potentially be utilized for the creation of a new jailbreak utility. And for those of you who are saying, well, how could that be useful? Essentially, in order to create a new jailbreak, the developers must discover what are referred to as exploits or vulnerabilities within iOS itself that can achieve root or administrative access on a system-wide level. And for more information on what a jailbreak actually is and how Apple could potentially make iOS 9 rootless, I definitely recommend watching my video on the topic because I go way into depth on that and some of the information in said video is actually required to grasp some of the concepts that I'm going over now. And oftentimes, exploits come about by finding vulnerabilities that are uncovered when a jailbreaker tries to make a crash occur within iOS. So now you might have drawn the conclusion that the messages crash could be exploited and utilized in the creation of a new jailbreak, right? Well, not really. Upon on further examination, it appears that instead of actually occurring inside of the messages.app, which is owned by Root, the crash actually happens with inside of banner notifications itself. That's a part of Springboard, and Springboard is owned by mobile. In other words, you can't gain administrative access through a Springboard crash whatsoever, so it's basically useless as far as creating a jailbreak is concerned. And again, for information on Root and mobile users for iOS, definitely watch that Rootless video I mentioned previously. But don't be discouraged, just because this vulnerability can't be exploited to create a new jailbreak utility doesn't mean that it won't speed the timeline of a release along. Now, Apple is already known to be working on a solution software based to correct this issue, and we're not going to get a release of iOS 8.3.1. Instead, we're going to get iOS 8.4. And the reason for that is because 8.4 is practically ready to go. It was in its third round of developer beta testing over two weeks ago at this point, and following Apple's developer beta releases, if they were to issue something like iOS 8.4 beta 4, then we would have already have seen that this week. However, they didn't, and that means we're likely going to see a release of 8.4 in the foreseeable future to correct this issue, as well as obviously to improve the music app, which is essentially what 8.4 was originally intended for. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple issues iOS 8.4 to the masses as early as Monday. And remember, the next jailbreak utility will be contingent upon iOS 8.4's release because the developers are banking on a similar scenario as last year's iOS 7.1.x jailbreak, which essentially went unpatched until Apple released iOS 8 in the fall. So from last June until September, we had a jailbreak on the latest public firmware, and that's why the developers haven't jailbroken iOS 8.2 or iOS 8.3 already. Again, remember, they want to ensure the longevity of their jailbreak utility and ensure that as many people can jailbreak as 
possible. And I've received a lot of questions asking whether other firmwares will be covered past ones. So iOS 8.1.3 being the first firmware to include the Taiji jailbreak patching remedy implemented by Apple. So yes, they will be covered. In fact, every iOS 8 release will from iOS 8.0 up until the latest firmware. I've also had you guys ask me a lot of questions of how long it will take them to finalize their jailbreak once iOS 8.4 is out. Well, essentially, if we look back to Taiji, the first one for iOS 8 through 8.1.2, it took them approximately two weeks from 8.1.1's release to ready it for the firmware. And of course, after iOS 8.1.2 is released, they were able to issue the jailbreak utility almost immediately. But I would expect somewhere around one to two weeks, possibly even more after we see iOS 8.4. I will keep you guys updated along the way though, but definitely keep in mind that we are likely going to receive a new jailbreak utility because the same exploits that have already been discovered thus far likely won't function on iOS 9 because iOS 9 is going to kind of shake things up as far as security is concerned. Next up, I wanted to talk about a new, interesting, and probably one of the most innovative social apps I've seen as of late that I'm sure a lot of you will actually find interesting. So essentially, it allows you to take pictures with your friends, but it takes it a step further than that. The coolest part is that you're able to send selfies in real time and watch a collage build with your friends. So you're able to see what they're up to and take pictures with them, again, in real time, even when you're apart. From there, you can upload the images to Instagram, or Facebook. And that brings up the enroll process. It's just as easy as signing in with Facebook because it utilizes their API to generate your profile as well as grab your friends so you don't even have to do anything. You can just get straight into taking pictures with your friends. All right, now moving on, let's discuss iOS 9, Apple's next major iOS release, which will be unveiled in a matter of days actually at their annual Worldwide Developers Conference, commonly referred to as WWDC, along with OS 10.11, but we're not really going to talk about that too much in today's video. Instead, iOS 9. There have been a lot of rumors going around as to what iOS 9 will actually implement, including reports saying that it will be heavily influenced by security improvements, as well as just general stability updates. However, according to some credible sources, we now have what appear to be some of the main features of the release. So according to 9to5Mac, iOS 9 will implement what's called proactive internally, and it will be the evolution of Spotlight. It will utilize Siri, Contacts, Calendar, Passbook, and third-party apps to provide you with additional information about your schedule and what you have planned, similar to Google Now. It will also be extended through Apple Maps, and it will display relevant points of interest and an augmented reality to locate POIs around you. And that feature is allegedly dubbed Browse Around Me. And quickly backing up, before we get into another purported feature, Proactive will supposedly be accessible simply by swiping to the left of your home screen, which is how you used to be able to get into Spotlight, as well as just by pulling down. So it's really as simple as that. If Proactive is actually implemented into iOS 9, a lot of Apple executives have kind of mixed feelings regarding the rollout because they seem to view it as being too too ambitious this early on in development. So we'll see. But iOS may finally be getting Google-like street view for Apple Maps. All right, and kind of wrapping things up for this episode, since I last recorded for this series, I've released a number of videos, starting with one talking about the first Apple Watch update. So yes, the Apple Watch did receive its first ever update being Watch OS 1.0.1 to include various stability improvements, as well as to add support for iOS 8.3 emojis. Following that, I released two unboxing videos and the first one was actually an unboxing of the new mid 2015 lower end 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. And the second one was the new base configuration of the 5K Retina iMac. And then next, just my coverage on what rootless actually means in regards to iOS 9, as well as my video going over the aforementioned text bug that causes a crash. All right, that concludes this week's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found the information concerning the text message bug and why it may actually expedite the creation of the next jailbreak useful. And if you did and you're interested in winning a brand new Apple Watch, be sure to rate this video up and navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of mobile Safari on your iOS device. Once you do, just sign up, come back here, again, rate this video up, 
and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code, which is actually the piece that appears inside of the fourth tab in the link itself after the equals symbol. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos covering various things like jailbreaking and the Apple Watch, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me on your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.